are now joined by number three ranked UFC Bantamweight, Mahlo Morais, and we'll take our first set of questions from Gabriel Gonzalez with Kate Side Press. Hello, Marlon. You took this fight very soon after the fight with Corey Sanhagen. Can you explain your decision to want to go right back into another camp for another fight? That's what I do, you know. I do this every day. I train. That's my passion. I've been a whole year working and just I lost a fight. I'm going to just sit home and enjoy the rest of the year with a defeat. That's all, That's not who I am. You know, I'm going to challenge myself, get it back in there and fight to the end, you know, and get there and perform well and get the victory Saturday night. When you watched the fight with Corey back, what did you learn most from your performance? Top five division, the best of the best. One mistake you lose, you know. We at the same level, but that was his day. H heads off to him, you know. He set me up very well, but I'm looking forward to getting there and set up someone Saturday night. There's another big bantamweight fight on Saturday with Jose Aldo and Chito Vera. Who do you think wins that fight? I, I don't know. I have no idea. I, I think Chito got his his weapons. Aldo got his weapons. And hopefully the best man wins. If Aldo wins, it will be amazing. I'm a Brazilian, you know. But we'll see. We'll see Saturday night who's going to be better. Final question. What do you think of Rob Font as an opponent and what does he do well? Uh, Rob Font is a very good fighter. He finishes fights. He's a striker. He got submissions. and But I just think I'm a little ahead of him. I'm faster and I'm going to get in there, put everything together and win this fight Saturday night. Thank you, Marlon. Good luck. Thank you. We'll take our next set of questions from Jim Barcelona with the Miami Herald. Thank you. I'm wondering after the last fight to a very tough opponent in defeat, when you watched the fight, how much did you learn from it? And did it make you want to change anything in the training or just business as usual, keep it steady with the training? Uh, man, I'm at the level and it's just a matter of detail and I was hungry, but now I'm even hungrier. I want to get that victory. I'm going to chase it and I'm going to get it. Training at American Top Team for this one down in South Florida. Yes. Yes. How did training go there for this camp? Who helped you get ready for this fight? I'm being training with the best guys and and. 135 145 you guys you all know and i'm challenging myself every day and i know this year was a great year for me i trained very hard i improved a lot and that's what i want i want to show everyone my skills and where i am now saturday night it's my time to shine what does it say about South Florida and all the MMA fighters that are here in South Florida training? There are just so many good ones down here. And how did you get to American Top Team? Uh, my coach, my coach is with me since I was 10 years old in Brazil, and he works at ATT. And I end up uh, moving to US and living in Florida, and then I moved to New Jersey. I had amazing years in New Jersey, but at the end of the day, uh, I was missing Florida a little, and I want to keep working with my coach. And my, my coach joining ATT, uh, for me, was just opening the door. And I went there a little. I like it. And then here I am, you know, and I couldn't be more prepared for my fight. And I, I think fighters go there because that's so many uh, people, so many training partners and coaches and the facility is amazing and you go there and you get to work and you get to learn. And lastly, for me, who will be in your corner for this fight? I got my coach Anderson and I got the guys from ATT and I can't wait to get in there and get the victory. All the best and thank you. We'll take our next question from Sumit Data with Sportskeeda. 
Hey Marlon, hope you're doing well. Yes, thank you. Uh, so heading into this fight, you're obviously on the back of a disappointing loss. But this, despite that, you've always been a high-ranked bantamweight who has been in contention for fighting for the title. So heading into this fight, what is your motivation to get back into the title picture once again? My motivation is win. Every, every day when I wake up and I look at myself in the mirror, I see a winner and I lost my last fight and I want revenge and I want to fight and that's it. That's, that's what I'm thinking. I always fight with the best in the UFC. I never pick a fight and being in the top 10 uh, makes you lose, makes you win. But you know what? I'm always going to be a tough fight for anyone in this division. Okay, uh, so for your opponent, Rob Font, he's currently ranked outside the top 10. And you being the number third ranked by the weight fighter, do you feel that you need to make a big statement with a win this weekend to get back into that team picture? I want to fight. I want to fight. And I want to fight. And his opponent, and in my opinion, he's a top 10 fighter. And he's a good fighter. He finishes fights. He can strike. He can fight on the ground. So it's a great opportunity for me to get in there, show my skills, and get a victory. Now, uh, in the past, uh, you've called for a fight against Dominic Cruz on a lot of occasions, but then that fight never came together. But now that we know Cruz will be fighting Casey Kenny next year, do you feel that you could finally get that fight for 2021? Or is that an idea you've completely given up on by this point? He's, Dominic Cruz is retired. No? Uh, no, no, he's set to return next year uh, for UFC 259. I didn't know that. I, I, I asked for him to fight me and he always, when I ask, he say he's retired. So I thought he was still retired. I'm sorry. So if he's back, I'm here and I'm game anytime, anywhere. All right. Uh, lastly, for me, uh, you've always said that your goal is to stay active no matter what, uh, who the opponent is. Heading into this new year, is the goal still to push for more fights in the Bantamweight division or do you rather hope to vouch for a title shot in 2021? Yeah, of course. I uh, hopefully the champion is busy. He's defending, he's fighting, he's losing, he's winning, and we gotta get there. We gotta get it flowing, and get new faces in the top, and fight everyone. All right. Uh, thank you so much, and good luck for your fight this weekend. Thank you. We'll take the next question from Diego Gibas with Asia Fight. Hello, Marlon. Sim, tô aqui. Me ouvindo bem? Fala, Diego. Beleza, meu amigo? Beleza. Marlon, uh, como você chegou, vocês chegaram a esse nome como adversário? Teve algum nome, outro nome especulado? Você chegou a pedir outro nome? Como é que foi a negociação? A gente foi caminhando, vendo luta por luta, quem eu já tinha lutado, quem eu não tinha lutado. E o primeiro nome que apareceu foi o dele. E como ele é, é um top 10 aí, top 11 da categoria, Sendo que o, o Corey Garber, na minha opinião, hoje ele é da outra categoria, porque ele já disse que vai lutar de 1,25. Então, é, vamos lá, cara. Vamos, vamos lutar com um cara, um cara duro, um cara da, do top 10. E, cara, eu tô preparado para essa luta aí, não só para essa, mas eu quero lutar e quero estar muito mais ativo em breve. Show. Uh, como é que você imagina a luta, tecnicamente falando? Tem alguma brecha, algum, alguma possibilidade que você possa adiantar para gente? Como você imagina o casamento dos estilos? Cara, o Rob Font é um cara bem completinho ali. Ele luta bem em pé com boxe, é, mistura um pouco de chute também. E quando as pessoas tentam derrubá-lo, ele tem uns, uns ataques no chão. É um cara perigoso. Mas eu tô indo lá para ser mais rápido que ele em pé, mais rápido que ele em todas as transições é, do grappling. E, e vencer essa luta aí e vencer de uma maneira que eu possa impressionar todo mundo. Certo. A divisão dos galos hoje é, ela é muito competitiva e tem grandes nomes. Para 2021, a gente aguarda o retorno do Dominic Cruz e do TJ de Lachol. Uh, é, você, como você julga a divisão uh, com, a, com o retorno desses dois ex-campeões? E se acha que talvez seja a, a divisão mais dura no momento? É o que eu digo em toda entrevista. Eu acho que categoria do Galo é uma das categorias mais disputadas, é, não tem ninguém muito à frente de ninguém, acho que é, 
muito desses caras aí do top 10 pode ser campeão. É, falando desse, a última pergunta desses dois ex-campeões, o TJ e o, e o Dominique, como você vê o retorno deles? Uh, você pensa, de repente, cruzar a caminho com eles no octógono? Cara, eu ainda não sei quando eles vão retornar, é, mas eles provavelmente vão, vão retornar bem. Eu não sei com quem o Dominic Cruz vai lutar, nem com quem o TJ vai lutar, mas eu acredito que eles são, são grandes nomes aí para a divisão e vão agregar muito. Você che... você... Antes você falou que você chegou a pensar que o Cruz estava aposentado, é isso? É, eu achei que ele, que ele tinha parado, porque inclusive a gente é, tentou lutar com ele, mas ele disse que não, não pensava em lutar, mas... É, já que ele tá de volta aí, vamos, vamos trabalhar aí. Quem não sabe essa luta não acontece também no futuro. Maravilha, obrigadão, Marlon. Boa luta, obrigadão, Carol. Valeu. We'll take our next question from Dane Martin with MMA Fight. Marlon, uh, obviously, you know, you want to close out the year on a big win here, but can you kind of put, you know. Can I give me an idea what this year has been like for you? Because you've gone through a lot. You know, obviously, you and your family had to deal with COVID-19, and then obviously the Corey Sanhagen fight, you know, the, the relocation, everything. Can you kind of give me an idea like what this year has been like for you if you if you look at the whole year? Crazy, man, because I've been working the whole year. I've been in the gym and being a lot of a lot of hits this year, you know. And it's time to hit back, you know. It's time to be me, to get in there, mix it up and show everyone what I'm made of. Coming out of the Sandhagen fight, I don't know the ranking exactly, but your top three in the world, uh, obviously getting another high rank would be good. And, and no offense whatsoever to Rob Fogg, but did the opponent matter as much as just wanting to get back in there and, and, and just kind of wash the bad taste of that last fight out of your mouth? Of course, the opponent matters. And my opponent is a very good fighter, and that's a guy that fights. And I don't want to fight with people that don't fight. And we're going to get in there, and we're going to put on a show. I know for sure, and I'm ready to get in there and prevail. Of course, martial arts fight, Marlon, but I don't think it's uh, you know, any surprise. Both you and Rob are phenomenal strikers. Uh, do you enjoy those kind of matchups, you know, going into it, knowing this guy's probably going to strike with you and you get to kind of, you know, show off you know, one of your most dangerous weapons, which is your kickboxing? Yeah, man, we're going to definitely fight. And I'm very excited to put on a show and close this year with one of the best fighters. And I know this is going to be one of the best fights of the show. Awesome. I know, you know, as you continue to chase that bantamweight title and head at 2021, obviously you like staying busy. Uh, but do you do you do you still think about the title, or is it just about fighting right now and not thinking about what's ahead of you, the next thing, the next thing? Because we are kind of obsessed with the next thing. We are, and then you have to answer those questions. But is it more just about the fight right now and and not worrying about that? Yeah, man. Let let my performance talks. You know, and. I'm going to get in there and do what I know, do what I love to do. And if that performance means I'm close to the title, uh, someone else is going to say I'm not going to be the one. Thank you, Marlon. We'll take our next questions from Danny Segura with MMA Junkie. Hi, Marlon. How are you? How's Kira doing? Everything good, buddy. Uh, how's the bingo? How's Kira doing? She's very good, old, unfortunately, 12 years old, sleeping more than walking, but it's a good. <laughs> still right. love her. I still love her. For sure, for sure. Good to hear, man. Um, so talk to me a little bit about uh, Rob Font as far as uh, the styles here. He's obviously a, a fun boxer, a, a guy that's been around in the rankings for some time. Um, how do you size him up? What do you think are his strengths and, and how do you think you match up with him? You already did. He's a very good boxer. He got his kicks, his tricks, and he's a dangerous grappler. And I'm I'm going to be there and, and and play chess with him. You know, I have to be the faster man and dictate the pace and show everyone my all my skills to win that matchup. For sure. 
And do you think people are are sleeping on you a little bit? Because yes, you're coming off a defeat, but you know, prior to that, you fought uh, Jose Aldo and you beat him, the guy who, you know, the, the last guy who fought for the belt. And uh, you know, not so long ago, before that, you were fighting for the title yourself. So, um, do you think people are are maybe sleeping on you a little bit entering uh, this belt? Man, to be honest, you only worth it what happens in your last fight. And in this world, you have to work hard and you have to win. And this is why I, I fought for this opportunity to get another fight, get in there and still show everyone what I can do. Yeah. And the bantamweight division, I know you just kind of talked about it a little bit in, in Portuguese. It's a very fun division. It's gotten really good in, in the last few months. You know, you got a lot of new blood, some older names coming in as well, right? Like Aldo, Frankie Edgar and, and others. Um, with everything that's going on and all the changes, where do you feel like you stand in the division as of right now? Everyone in the top 10 can be a champion, you know, and I'm one of the guys in the top 10, maybe one, two fights, two good performance away from a, a title fight. That's it. Do you think the bantamweight division right now is the best weight class in the UFC? I would say the most competitive, you know, we got so many guys at the highest level guys that can striking and grappling and not just be one dimensional you know but fight anywhere the game this game goes yeah and what does that do to you mentally as a fighter uh, in that division knowing that you know almost every guy in that uh top 15 is is game and, and is a very dangerous opponent does it almost have to put you uh you know a little bit extra sharper in, in your training and in your life and everything that you do Yes, that's it. We always got to get better. We we can't sit home and, and just wait, you know. You got to live in the gym, spend most of your hours working and trying to do what things are people are still not doing. And when you have a passion and you do this because you love it, you can do it, you know. And I know uh, I live more in the gym than home and I work hard and this is why I'm still in the top 10 and i'm still a threat for sure i'm looking forward to the fight on saturday and best of luck thanks that's all the time we have for you today marlon thank you oh awesome